Okay, let's go back to the beginning here. <clears throat> Going back to the parts I skipped over. Eh, maybe I was a bit hasty. Yeah. Start with this nifty picture of Joseph Smith getting the gold plates and meeting Moroni, the dead guy who's like, I guess, some kind of an angel. I guess. Reminds me more of the ghost of Christmas past. I just finished uh, Alma 11. I was drinking hard cider. This is my last Simpler Times. It's a Pilsner. And it came recommended from uh, uh, Trader uh, Trader Joe's, and it has a redolence of cider, nice and crisp. <clears throat> Simpler times is divine. How about that? My own commercial. All right, so you, you guys saw the picture of Joseph Smith kneeling before Moroni. All right, here's another part of the introduction. And there's a, a couple more parts, I think. A brief analysis of the Book of Mormon. Oh, this is going to be good. So we're going to learn something here. Three classes of record plates capitalized are indicated on a title page of the Book of Mormon. Namely, one, the plates of Nephi, which, as the text of the book makes clear, yeah, were of two kinds. A, in parentheses, uh, the larger plates, larger in plates capitalized, some sacred shit. B, parentheses, the smaller plates in the S and the P are capitalized. The former were more particularly devoted to the secular history of the peoples concerned, while the latter were occupied mostly by sacred records. <clears> the <throat> simpler times. People are still simple, but it's getting mighty complicated. Two, <clears throat> the plates of Mormon. Containing an abridgment from the plates of Nephi made by Mormon. Which Nephi? You've got one and two Nephi, and you've got three and four Nephi, and they're separated by this entire book. And apparently, Nephi three and four is just a namesake. Another sequel. Named in honor of, excuse me. Ah. <sighs> Containing an abridgment of the plates of Nephi made by Mormon uh, with many commentaries and a continuation uh, of the history by himself. And with further editions by Moroni, son of Mormon. <laughs> Three the plates of ether containing a history of the Jaredites, which account uh, was abridged by Moroni, who inserted comments of his own and incorporated the record with the general history under the title The Book of Ether. To these may be added another set of plates, which are of frequent mention in the Book of Mormon 
namely, four. The brass plates of Laban, the murdered guy, brought by the people of Lehi from Jerusalem and containing the Holy Scriptures and genealogies, many extracts from which appear in the Nephite records. A few extracts. They extracted a bit from Isaiah, especially. But there's extracts. What I want to know is how they got a copy of the New Testament, <laughs> according to King James, which they lift from heavily in this book. The Book of Mormon comprises 15 main parts or divisions, known with one exception, as books, each designated by the name of its principal author. Of these, the first six books, namely, First Nephi, Second Nephi, Jacob, Enos, uh, Jerom, and Omni, are translations from the corresponding sections of the smaller plates of Nephi. They all crammed that on, you know, because there was extra plates. Believe it or not. Wow. Between the books of Omni and Mosiah, we find the words of Mormon connecting the record of Nephi, as engraved on the smaller plates, with Mormon's abridgment of the larger plates, for the periods following. The words of Mormon and a preface to the parts following. The body of the book from Mosiah to Mormon chapter 7 inclusive is the translation of Mormon's abridgment of the plates of Nephi. The latter part of the Book of Mormon, from the beginning of Mormon chapter 8 to the end of the volume, was engraved by Mormon's son Moroni, who first <sighs> proceeded to finish the record of his father's life. Well, Explains the homogenous uh, narration. I guess. Ah, uh, okay. I guess. <laughs> uh, oh, let's see. The latter part of the Book of Mormon, from the beginning of Mormon chapter 8 to the end of the volume. <laughs> was engraved by Mormon's son, Moroni. <laughs> Who first proceeded to finish the record of his father's life and then made an abridgment of the Jaredite records? He had a lot of time. Everybody else was dead, I believe, except... I guess he was hiding it somewhere, writing shit on gold. <laughs> Fixing all, correcting past works, and homogenizing the whole sound. But his dad did a whole bunch of the work, the lion's share. Yeah, okay, it makes sense now. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, finished the record of his father's life and then made an abridgment of the Jaredite record as the Book of Ether. <laughs> Later, he added the parts known to us as the Book of Moroni.
The period covered by the Book of Mormon annals extend from B.C. 600 to A.D. 421. In or about the latter year, Moroni, the last of the Nephite historians, <coughs> pardon me, Nephite historians, <coughs> great job, guys. Not really. Nephite historians sealed the sacred record and hid it up unto the Lord to be brought forth in the latter days as predicted by the voice of God through his ancient prophets in A.D. 18. 27, the same Moroni, then a resurrected personage, personage <laughs> delivered the engraved plates to Joseph Smith. Thus featured. Isn't that pretty? Pretty as a picture. Pictures don't lie, do they? Anyway, that's part of the introduction, and uh, I'll probably put this up before I put up Alma 11, so it's going to be good. It's just going to be long, sorry. Peace the fuck out. Have a wonderful, whatever the fuck it is, you might be having. I want you to have a wonderful one.